Hey, you guys. Good afternoon. I hope everybody's doing good today. So welcome to an episode of the Lovely News Network podcast. So I wanted to come on here. It's a lot going on, y'all. <laughs> Child. And I'm trying not to stress, but it's a lot going on. First and foremost, I want to start with the good news. Shout out to all my Discorders for getting your verification badges. I seen y'all partying in the Friend Finder room. So congrats to all y'all in the blue. You guys are officially verified on the platform. But if you guys did not know, today on Twitter, on Twitter, winter is coming started trending. And we've been saying this for a while, that winter is coming, be prepared. We know that's the whole Game of Thrones mantra, winter is coming, winter is here, are you ready? And so it's a lot of stuff that's just happened in like the past week. Um, I don't even know where to start, but I'm going to try and break down as much of it as I can during this podcast. So back on September 21st, if you guys remember, if you're in the Discord, this is why I had encouraged a lot of people to go and join because there's so much information that not just me, but of course, everyone, it's a huge community and we're always keeping each other abreast of everything going on in the world, on social media, from celebrity news to real news, financial information, you know, just everything is in there. So on the 21st, I was watching CNN um, because the day before I had posted on Instagram about how they're now trying to tax, you know, Venmo accounts, cash apps. If you have over six hundred dollars in your account, it will be taxed. And I kept saying that, well, that doesn't make sense, because for most people, for most social media influencers, people who work on social media, everything you do is taxed. There's no free lunch on social media. I know people like to think that, oh, well, you got a bunch of super chats. That's just free money. Absolutely not. They tax all of that money. YouTube gets a cut, even cash apps. You know what I'm saying? When you pull that money out or you get it deposited into your bank account or, you know, via PayPal, it still goes through an auditing system. They know how much is in these accounts. And if it's in your bank account, you can and will be taxed for it, depending on how much it is in your line of work and things like that. So they're talking about passing these bills to, you know, tax people. And of course, a lot of people are thinking, oh, well, it's just the rich. They're taxing the rich. Who cares? And I'm like, no, they're going to tax everybody. And most of the people that you're thinking about who don't pay taxes, like the Jeff Bezos and stuff, those are billionaires. And there's all types of loopholes for them. But the average rich person, they're already paying a lot of money in taxes. Don't get it twisted. Now, the reason why they're implementing this, it's more or less to start taxing the regular poor and middle class because a lot of people use their Venmo accounts and their cash app accounts almost like a savings. Like, you know, they just hold it there. Like, especially if you do like, you know, if you're an entrepreneur or you do freelance work, a lot of times people just let that money accumulate. So maybe for every gig that you book, somebody sends you a hundred bucks and then, you know, you turn around six months from now, you're at over a thousand dollars. So a lot of times that's how people use their cash app. They just let the money accumulate. And so obviously the government is seeing that and they're like, OK, the money's just sitting there. You're not depositing it in your bank account so that way we can tax it when it hits your bank account. You're basically just letting it sit there. So now they're trying to implement these rules for, yeah, if there's over $600 in there, we want our cut. If they don't want to deposit it, that's on them. But we're still going to get our cut off the top. And so that made my ears perk up because I'm like to the point where they're literally focusing on Cash App and Venmo. What the F is going on in the economy right now? What is going on financially? So at that point, I was just watching like a lot of news programs, Googling, researching. And so on CNN, um, this lady was speaking about the U.S. economy and I watched and I said, wow, everything I've been thinking, this woman is basically reiterating everything that I'm feeling. So I had posted this on the Discord and I said at everyone, it looks like we have a potential economic crisis looming. This probably further explains why they, they are passing laws to now go after the public's cash apps, PayPal, Venmo accounts, cryptocurrency. They are searching the couch cushions of America to help pay back America's debt. So now I'm going to play you guys the two videos that I have posted on um, the Discord. Worried about making rent, paying the bills, and now they're supposed to worry about Congress paying its bills. What is at stake for viewers at home here? There is never a convenient time, I would say, to have a financial crisis and another recession, but probably now is the least convenient time precisely because of all of the other crises you just mentioned that America is going through. If the United States government cannot pay its bills, and again, these are bills that have already been committed to, not new spending. This is about basically paying off your existing credit card bill. If the U.S. government runs out of cash, can't pay those bills, a few things happen. 
One is that social security checks can't get paid, uh, military service members don't get their salaries, et cetera, all, all of the things basically that the government pays for. Two um, is that we violate the Constitution. The Constitution explicitly says that the public debt shall not be questioned. Essentially, right now, U.S. debt, because we've never defaulted, among other things, is considered the safest of safe assets. And if we prove that we're actually quite cavalier about paying back our creditors, then that not only freaks out uh, people who buy U.S. Treasuries, U.S. debt, but almost every other financial asset that is benchmarked against uh, U.S. debt. So you could have this potentially cascading, cascading set of panic, again, throughout financial markets around the world that could take us back into recession. So um, not a, a lot of good outcomes here. Yeah. And, and David, just the politics of this, as Catherine pointed out, yeah. Republicans agreed to spend the money that is now you know, coming due, but yet they're saying they're not going to vote for this. Democrats are squabbling over how much they're going to allow on this other side and the fact that... Okay, so you guys just saw those. So now it was announced yesterday, now some of the major blogs are picking it up, that basically the U.S. Treasury is saying that they are running out of money and we could be literally hitting a financial crisis by October 18th if Congress doesn't act on the debt ceiling. So it is getting really bad out here. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this video that just came out yesterday, basically reiterating everything that we've been talking about on the Discord since September 21st. Like I told y'all, this has definitely been a September to remember. Yeah, go ahead and check this out. Janet Yellen said that the U.S. Treasury Department will exhaust its ability to pay the nation's bills if Congress fails to raise or suspend the debt limit within three weeks. Min Su Ken tells us more. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned that the nation will likely run out of money within three weeks unless Congress acts to avoid serious harm to the economy. She said that the Treasury Department will be left with very limited resources and will likely exhaust its extraordinary measures if Congress fails to raise or suspend the debt limit by October 18. Speaking at a Senate hearing on Tuesday, Yellen expressed her deep concern over the looming debt ceiling. And if the debt ceiling were not raised, I think there would be a financial crisis and a calamity. And absolutely, it's true that the interest payments on the government debt would increase. Yellen also cautioned that it was uncertain whether the Treasury would be able to meet the nation's financial commitments after that date. Her remarks come a day after Senate Republicans blocked a bill that would fund the government and suspend the U.S. borrowing limit to pay for previously incurred government spending. She said that failure to clinch a deal by mid-October would lead to the first default in U.S. history, one that would be disastrous for the American economy and global financial markets. The Treasury had already enacted extraordinary measures to keep government funds flowing after the debt ceiling was reached over the summer. But those measures will run out in about three weeks' time, according to Yellen. The projections from the U.S. Treasury Secretary raise concern that Washington could default on its debt in a matter of weeks if lawmakers fail to act over crucial funding measures. All right, so you guys just heard what they had to say. So this is really disturbing because... Once again, it just makes you nervous and wary about our future. You know, not only the rest of 2021, but what do our kids have to look forward to? You know, they're saying that literally the U.S. economy could crash by October 18th if they're not able to raise the debt ceilings. People are tired of paying more taxes, more money. America's been strapped for cash and that whole pandemic shutdown did not help. Remember, when they shut down everything, that's what really caused this economic crisis that we're in. Granted, we've been in debt for a while, but it's been exacerbated by the whole lockdown situation and people not being able to work and stimulate the economy. And it's had a trickle down effect. And then on top of that, they were paying people unemployment and you had people getting unemployment for months. OK, they literally just stopped unemployment this month is when it ended. But there was people who were on there who didn't need to be on there. You had some people on there scamming. You know, we don't even want to get into the whole PPP loans. OK, millions of dollars just being paid out to just whoever, you know, whatever random business I just decide to dream of and get 10 grand for, you know. So a lot of wastage went down in 2020 and in 2021. And now we're facing those financial repercussions and it's quiet as it's kept. OK, this might be the reason for that horrible pullout in Afghanistan. 
Because it, it just doesn't make any sense. I feel like they just left like, fuck it. America is about to collapse, possibly, quote unquote, um, in a few months. We're struggling to keep our own people afloat. We can't keep dumping any more resources into Afghanistan. Hence why they just pulled out. Just woke up one day and said, we're out. <laughs> okay? So the rabbit hole goes so deep with everything that's going on here. And, you know, it's just sad when you think about it. Because it's like, damn. How did we get here? It's like, we know how we got here, but it's not our fault. Like, just the regular people, you know what I'm saying, in the country, it's not our fault. And it's just sad that it's gotten this bad. And, you know, it's going to be a stand on America if America ends up going into debt and our money is basically worthless on the, you know, global stage. That's a bad look. Nobody's going to want to lend us any more money because they're going to know that we can't pay it back. And then if we're getting loans from China and other places, they could end up owning America. You know, so it's a very sticky situation. We're just going to have to watch to see how this plays out. But um, there's a lot of already foreign governments that own bridges and certain lands here in America. So I don't know, y'all, but it's it's just it's a lot looming. So now I want to go ahead and talk about the vaccine mandate. So a lot of that is getting real. Um, yesterday, many nurses in New York were basically. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.